Hey guys, uh, I'm gonna make this a really quick one, uh, nice and quick video. Um, the Sword of Night and Flame's been nerfed through the through the floor. Uh, the range is gone and the damage is, is nowhere near what it used to be. Um, so I've been spending two, three days looking for a turn at builds and for those PVEers that wanna slap bosses like they used to, there is a replacement. Um, and the replacement is the uh, the Blasphemous Blade. Um, so I'll share my stats here. So Blasphemous Blade, uh, level 10, uh, we'll explain why in a minute. We'll actually look at the Radon fight just to show you that this isn't the, the arm NG5. So we'll look at the Radon fight um, just to show you that it does extremely good damage at high tier. Uh, Blasphemous Blades doing um, you know some strong damage, but we're not actually going to be using any attacks. We're just going to be using the art, the, the weapon art on it. Um, we've got quite high poise. We're wearing the uh, fire prelate gauntlet for the poise because if you get knocked back, it does stop you. So you want to actually get that off. We're using greatly boost uh, <coughs> shard of Alexander, uh, raising fire attack. Uh, sorry, uh, fire scorpion charm, Godfrey's icon, and the Carrion uh, filigreed crest um, with with a few mana potions, etc., etc. We're also going to use the um, I can never pronounce this, but the blood Uchigarata. Um, with the seppuku weapon art um, and we're also using a few sorceries as well uh, incantations sorry so we're using uh, flame grant me strength uh, which we're going to use so we're going to buff ourselves up gives us some extra fire damage the, o the only other thing that's worth looking at as well is the um, is the actual uh, wondrous mystic i think we're using uh, extra fire damage um, in, in the mystic let me just quickly check i think it's extra fire damage and I apologise for the quality of this video, I, it's a slapdash video, I'm not going to do too much editing on this, just want to show you the build so it's nice and easy to do. Uh, extra fire damage, the, the, the magic, we, we've been testing this, um, I, I'm not too sure whether the magic damage actually uh, is, is actually doing anything, so it might be worth using the, uh, the Cerulean Hidden Tear uh, to eliminate um, FP consumption on it, on it. You could also use something like the Charge Attack, we're testing that to see if that works. But it is quite, uh, it, it is quite uh, endurance intensive. So in some cases you might want to use um, you know the the stamina ones in, instead, but it's probably um, the charge attack or, or the, the the FP consumption, um, which which should also be quite good. Um, finally, stats. So I am level three hundred and sixty-seven, but um, you know the stat squish is irrelevant. So you want some high vigor, probably around you know fifty as a bare minimum if you're a lower level. So something like around one hundred and fifty or some, somewhere around that area. Probably want about 30 to 40 endurance, and then you want to pump faith, um, dexterity, and strength. Now, dexterity and strength are probably unnecessary. A bit of arcane, just for a little bit of scaling, but I'm not too sure if we're still testing to see whether arcane actually has any influence over it. We, I can't confirm whether it does or doesn't at this time, but the strength and dexterity stats kind of, they're kind of irrelevant. We don't really need them because the damage is coming from the faith stack. So um, let's actually have a look at, uh, let's actually have a look at how, how this fares in a fight. So this is with three people, so the scaling is obviously up, up higher than it normally is. But one of the also awesome things about this weapon is it will actually, uh, it will actually heal you as well. If you watch my health bar, every time I use the Art of War, it will actually heal me. So I can just stand in front of the boss and just take it and just keep, keep using the weapon arm. Watch my health bar. No need for health potions anymore, guys. Pretty cool, right? So I will say this now, the it is fire damage. So when you are against bosses that have fire resistance, then it doesn't do as much damage. Um, same with the Elden Beast. Um, it doesn't do as much damage to the Elden Beast, but it still does heal you for the same amount.
there's not really much else to add. Um, it's a left click spam, it's, the, it's exactly the same as the Sword of Night and Flame, but the Sword of Night and Flame never healed you. So, this one, uh, although the damage isn't, it isn't as strong, we all know that that weapon was broken. Um, it wasn't supposed to do that sort of damage. So we're taking a bit of damage, and we're just going to heal off. We're just going to keep healing up. So I don't think I've used a single health, single health potion. So even take, we'll, we'll take the direct shot from the uh, from the boss. And the range is also nuts. So quite far away from the boss. We're almost back to full HP. Get one more attack off. Have to take a mana. FP flask. So, I mean, you could really just run this build with one health potion. You don't really need health potions, you just need mana potions. I'm sure there's other things that people can think of and how to vary uh, to make this build a bit, a bit more stronger, but... it is. The Blasphemous Blade, which is now the Sword of Night and Flame 2. Hope you enjoyed it guys. Uh, any questions drop a comment. Uh, any variations to the build let me know. We're still testing some things but uh, overall it's a pretty damn good build. Hope you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to drop a like, comment. Um, let's discuss. Thanks guys. Bye.